An elusive target is basically the cleanest possible assassination fantasy we could come up with. It's me as the assassin. It's a memorable target. It's a window to engage. And the tension of knowing that if I miss, it's gone forever. The way it works is that you'll see a briefing, a briefing video that tells you about the target. You can look at the map. Then for that entire time period, you can play the mission. But once the target is dead, or you're dead, or the target escapes, that's it. You're done. So you launch it, and then the clock is ticking. You spend your time looking for the target, making the perfect plan, and then hopefully executing it. Even though it's an, uh, a level that you might know from before, it feels fresh uh, because you're so focused on that target, finding him and then tracking him and then eliminating him. Yes. So, and a big part of a uh, mission is, of course, how uh, this target behaves and uh, where he is at. So um, it kind of shapes, or to me at least when I play it, it feels like I'm playing something different. A big part of a Hitman game is learning the tricks of the level. I mean, we've, we've even built this into the way we think about our levels and the experience, this concept of level mastery. What this means is for the player who's really taking his time to master the level, he knows the tricks, he knows the shortcuts, he knows how he can get from A to B without being spotted, he knows where the disguises are and the death traps are. So an elusive target lives in that context, but it's a target and protection and a story that isn't there usually. So we slot it in on top of uh, the experience that's already in place, but it is its own. Uh, it, it is its own assassination story. Um, every elusive target is built up in the beginning around a target. Who is this person? Who wants them dead? Why is that more or less justified? What are they doing in the place? What, what is what is the what is the little assassination story that you're going to Paris in this case to experience? Yeah, when we playtested uh, the elusive targets uh, internally, um, we found uh, uh, some interesting things. Of course, we were expecting, we weren't quite sure if it was too challenging or uh, too easy, or yeah, we were, you know, checking out the rules for for, for um, uh, successful completion, like uh, that can you repeat it or not, and that kind of stuff, but also the mission itself. So, um, but it was very interesting to, to observe uh, the players when they were playing because everybody has their own kind of reaction when, they're, when, uh, when they d do discover the targets. And I'm happy that they did. Um, some spent more time than others and some found them quickly and uh, some just stumbled upon them, right? And their reactions were more like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, different kinds of surprise, you know? Uh, some were uh, either like, oh, or uh, ooh, and then you would have those who were f feeling the tension, I think, that the minute they saw him and like, oh, that's the guy, that's the guy, oh, and uh, uh, kind of just uh, spon uh, spontaneously just uh, running in, into cover or hiding mm -hmm. or doing something and then like, wait, wait, I need to think, I need to think, oh, he's leaving, oh, okay, uh, can I now? be here now? Can I be close to him? And, uh, yes. and um, yeah, and then you also, also had like the, uh, the guys who didn't say anything, but they were usually just like, just very attentive suddenly, right? Mm. Or sitting still in their chair, and like, okay, you go into concentration mode. Right? And that was, you know, uh, a lot of fun to see. Yeah. So we, we mm. play tested it by putting people into our game cafe, five guys uh, aside, uh, playing PCs. Mm. And it's really interesting to watch how people sort of like, looking over at the <laughs> other guy's screen to yeah. see what's happening. Because it's all about strategy, right? It's, if you want to pull it off well, and you do, then you need to think about all of the classic things in, 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 in a hitman assassination, which is opportunity and how do, you, how do you hide the body and how do you avoid witnesses and all of these things. Um, but you're also under an enormous amount of, of tension. And I think that's one of the most interesting things that came out of our construction of an elusive target, this fact that you have a time limit. If you die, well, no, no tryovers. Once the target is dead, it's done. So the way the target went down, counts. So I think elusive targets plug into the feeling of being an assassin. And that's, I think, what we were aiming for. It's part of the, this whole goal and, and brand identity that we have, this idea that Hitman is in the building, right? Um, and the fact that we apply these quite tense rules with the time limit and restrictions about, can you try again? When the target is dead, it counts. So if it was ugly, well, it was ugly. If you were spotted, you were spotted. If, if you died, well, you're done. 
that, that creates a tension that is, is really interesting to see. And of the people who play it, they react, they react really interestingly to it.